Take this DX27 patch for instance. I'm creating them now on the iPad so as they can be stored and I don't have to bother with paper. I just use the pencil and I use the template. I make this uh, DX27 template a template and I just pull up a blank one write with a pencil and save them and the app I'm using is Good Notes for the benefit of those that want to do a similar sort of thing but this is a voice programming for the DX27 and it's small compared to some modern synthesizers in terms of the number of uh, parameters and numbers that have to set in the menus so what, what do we need to do here? Even all these numbers are not significant. You notice that the name is large metal surface. So we are trying to simulate a large metal surface when it's hit with a hammer or something like that. And you can make all kinds of metallic noises with the FM synthesis. It's particularly good for that. Because the metallic noises always depend on non-harmonic partials so the reason why you want non-harmonic uh, partials in the frequency spectra is because they're needed in order to get the natural sound of a struck piece of metal now the way you get this on an FM synthesizer is to choose non-integer numbers for the frequency ratios Look down here in the frequency ratio column and you can see that operator 1, which is the carrier, is the only one that has a frequency ratio of 1, which is standard keyboard pitch. 2 would be an octave higher and 4 and so forth, they would go up. So 1.73 doesn't relate to any particular semitone or harmonic interval and we have 4.24 and 0 0.87 for operator 4 so the frequency ratio of the various operators is actually the most important thing in forming the type of sound that you're trying to get so that would be the first thing that you would write on your notes your frequency ratios are going to, for the most part, have a major impact on the type of sound that comes out of your synth. Now, why would I say probably? Because not all of these operators may even be contributing to the sound at all. If the output level is set to zero or a very small value, or the operator is turned off, then it has no impact whatsoever on the sound and you can completely ignore its envelope generator line it doesn't matter what those parameters are set to if the operator is not contributing to the sound at all this is the envelope generator line here that's associated with a particular operator now the beauty of this patch is that it doesn't need the LFO so your top line here you can ignore the only thing that you need from your top line is the algorithm and possibly the feedback but as we are going to see that feedback does not have a big effect on your final sound because the number is only one so there's no big impact on your final sound you could just as easily set that at zero and probably get the same thing but none of the other uh, numbers on the top line are significant, so it doesn't matter what they're set to. Actually, that's not true. You have to make sure that the PMD and the AMD are set to zero. The PMD and the AMD must be set to zero, or whatever other numbers are there for your LFO is going to have an impact on your sound. However, the, the PMD and the AMD are set to zero by default when selecting the, an initialized voice. So it's best to start with an initialized voice and just change the numbers that you need to change to get your sound. So having eliminated the top line from the equation, we can also completely eliminate the bottom line. The bottom line here, or performance line, 
is just has the default parameters. Those are the values you find when you initialize the uh, initialize the voice to just a plain sine wave. So we've made no changes whatsoever, and they're not impacting in any way on the sound that you hear. So basically, you can make this sound on your DX27 by just initializing the the internal uh, memory, initialize the um, buffer, and then put in your ratios and your envelope generator parameters. And you notice we have no detuning here, it's all zero, which is the default anyway. So basically, the uh, procedure for creating this voice from scratch would be simply to pick your algorithm, pick your ratios, and set up your envelope generators. Three simple steps and you're done. Now let's look at this marvelous algorithm 4. Notice that algorithm 4 has the four operators arranged in such a way that 3 and 4 together modulate 1 along with 2. Now if 3 is turned off 4 is going to have absolutely no effect on anything. If 3 is turned on, then whatever is set on 4 will have some sort of impact on your final sound. But if the level output level of 3 is very low, then the impact might be negligible or minimal. So it's a balance basically of the output levels and the ratios and the envelope generators that make up 99.9% .9 of all sounds you can make with a 4 operator FM synth. Essentially, because of the fact that 1, which is the carrier, is modulated in two separate ways, either by 2 or by 3, together, we can actually have two different sounds. How you say that we can have two different sounds? Because we can set the envelope so that there's a time delay before the sound changes to the second one. So we could have two determine the bass sound and then we could set the envelope that three gradually comes in and changes the sound after some time. And that is exactly what we have done here. If you strike a key Let's strike a key and demonstrate. That's just hitting, or we could be just hitting a large metal drum or gong. And that is the sound pretty much produced by one and two operators. If I hold the key down, hear it? That second sound that comes in after a short while is faded in by the setting of the envelope generator for three. Let's go and have a look again at the numbers. Notice that the attack rate here for operator three is set to 3. Now, basically, the attack rate parameter means that it takes a longer time for the rise of the attack period with lower numbers. So when we have the attack rate set to 31, as is the case with 1 and 2, that means that that kicks in instantly when the key is struck. So when the key is struck, instantly it goes to maximum volume. But when we have these low numbers like 3 and 6, there's a time, a long time period because we're very close to zero. We're nearly close to the very longest time period that the uh, DX27 uh, can do. But in actual fact, when we drop to 2 and 1, we see that they get exponentially longer. It's not a linear relationship. So what happens here is that with 3 and 6, 
after some time has elapsed and the note is still held, these rise to maximum amplitude. But in this case, maximum amplitude on these two operators does not relate to volume at all. It relates to the modulation of the 1. Because the 3 and the 4 modulate the 1 and the 2 also modulates the 1. So this, uh, this 3 and 4 here kick in after a long period of time and produce that secondary sound that you hear fading in after the key is held. Now it's true across all of these um, envelope parameters that the lower numbers constitute longer times and the higher numbers are shorter times in the case where time is the issue. Of course, in the case where level is the issue, in this case, it's only the higher number will mean a larger amplitude. So once we keep this, bear this in mind when we are setting up our envelope generators, we can produce any sound that we desire. If I was to suddenly take this here and move it to 31 also, or if I was to turn off operator 3 entirely so that it doesn't impact on operator 1, then you would only get the first sound and not the second one. Let's hear it again. Now let's turn off Operator 3. How do we do that? You see where it says there E1234? We could turn it off by just re reducing the output amplitude to zero. But we have a convenient way to turn it off with these four buttons. These are turn off and on the operators. So if I want to turn off that, I just turn it off and it puts a zero there on three. Now when I strike the key, I can hold it as long as I like, but I'm not going to get that secondary sound. Ever. Turn it back on. And we're back to where we were before. Well, that's uh, the end of your first lesson today. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please like us and sh share with your friends. Be sure to sub the channel and click the ring the bell for further lessons as they become available. But we're teaching you FM synthesis and we're using the wonderful Yamaha DX27 genuine hardware synthesizer to do it. Have a good day and see you in the next video.